Welcome to this episode. Last time we hit boom time, so the focus will be to introduce some public transport to our growing city and to pad it out a little bit to meet those demands. Uh, so we've got quite a few policies that we got. I won't introduce those this time, but in a new one. And we have a wide selection of new ra roads. We built our own roundabout last time, so check out the previous video for that. But now we've got a large roundabout we could use, as well as some intersections, which I'm sure will be handy in the near future. I've also got highways so I can upgrade this road running through our town into a proper highway if we like. As we unlock public transport, we've got a lot of the public transport options come through. We've got all the bus lane ones, the tram lane ones, and the ferry uh, ones. As I'm next to a, a river, I think making use of ferries is a good idea in this town, so I'll probably do that quickly. And then we've got a bunch of other things that are nice buffs you get. I will take care of cemeteries soon because, as I said in the previous stream, when you unlock something, your city will start to need it. And with cemeteries unlocked, that's our first bit of death care. So I think it's important for me to knock that on the head. So I'll start off with the cemetery. Then I'm going to work through some buses and some ferries for you all. I hope you enjoy this episode. So demand for various things is up a little bit, uh, so it's probably a good idea to expand some areas whilst we introduce these new services. So let's see how much they're going to cost. First of all, I want to get in here and look for the death care. So cemeteries are one of those things that you can't move once you put them in. It doesn't matter where you put them, particularly they're not unattractive or anything, but you need to think about the coverage they provide and the fact that you're stuck with them being somewhere for a quite a while because you would have to empty the cemetery before you're allowed to move it so we can see it covers quite a large area if I was, if I was able to put it somewhere like this um, that would cover a lot of things so I think I'll put a cemetery in this area give me a second and I'll zoom in and do that I think this gives us a good layout. I've upgraded the highway. We've got a fairly major road coming through here and linked an extra major road up here. So there's a bit more traffic capacity in this area. I won't put any bigger roads through this area because it seems to be coping okay at the moment, but it'll let us refocus some of our efforts on this side. And now we've got some room. I can see about putting in uh, that cemetery somewhere sensible. So it would fit somewhere like here and you'd see it would cover a lot of the town. If I bring it up here because of the one-way system, it wouldn't cover into some areas as well. So that's something to be considering. It could go straight off a major road and then it would cover everything. That might not be a bad way of doing it. So perhaps I'll put it here and it can just end at the end of a, a major road. And that'll become a long-lasting feature of this town. It doesn't produce much traffic and things and it's quite a nice area. So I'll probably detail around it in a little while. So, the next thing I said I'd do is talk about some public transport, either ferries or buses. Now, just to make sure I've got enough money for ferries, I'd probably need... What does this cost? 7,000, 5,000, and I need a terminal. So the deports are where you get things from, so if I'm going to have a ferry deport, I'm going to need 30,000 to get that started. Buses. Um, biofuel buses, 30, 20, so biofuel buses are part of the more environmentally friendly version. Um, costs a bit more, again it's 30,000, so it's quite a lot of money I'm going to need to introduce it. And if I look at the option of trams, again I would need trams. So I think the cheapest option to start with, and it's probably the truth for most of you, is buses, and I'm going to have to look at taking out a loan to afford this bus depot. The good thing about buses is when you put down stops, um, they're free because you just you just adapt the side of the road almost I think so we'll find that out in a sec but let's sort out some cash 
So if we go into finances and across into the loan section, I can get a 20,000 loan, which on top of the 14 I have would cover everything. And that'll let me do this. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to put in my buses. So first off, a bus depot. This will be where all the buses come from in the city. So this is going to be quite important to be able to get them out there into the world. And I think they come back for maintenance occasionally, but mostly it's just when you add new things that they come in and out. So let's think about putting this somewhere over here that's sensible so they can get back in quite quickly. This is going to be kind of industrial still. So let's put that there. Uh, so that's my bus depot installed. And now let's try and do some bus routes. If I scream to the end, now I've got the option of adding bus routes. So let's start off by working on something on this downtown area. So let's... You need to think about the side of roads and everything are on as well, because when you click and move, you'll see that if I want to go to this side of the road, because the bus can just turn left, it's nice and short. If I pick the opposite side of the road, it's going to have to do a strange little loop. So you need to consider which side of the road you're placing your bus uh, routes on. So I'm going to start up here at the end of this sort of shopping area, and I'm going to offer a, a way for people to get down here to this, um, this school area. I think that'll be pretty good. And then from this school area, I'll skim over into this uh, this new area that's not built yet. And then I'm going to go up here and into this industrial area. So let's go to here. And then we'll come back and complete the loop. When you've completed a loop, the bus line's happy and will start working. What a lot of people do, and what I like to do, is almost do a reverse line next to it. So I'll move it slightly further along, and I'll just do the same route, almost the same loop, but in reverse. So let's go up here. We'll come back down here, and I'll stop slightly further away. And then I will do a stop down here to gather people up in this section. And then I'll go to the other side of the public library. And then if I go this, it'll complete the loop nicely. Yeah, I think I'll complete the loop nicely. So now I have two bus lines going in opposite directions. When you install a bus line, that's the best time for you to go in and tune this because they just get generic names. So I'm not worried about calling these bus lines one and two now. I think that's reasonable. But I think to make my life easier, I will change the colors of them both. So I'll make one purple and one green. And then they're more obvious in this, this route. It'll change the colour of the bus that's in use, so if you've got other buses unlocked, you can also choose to pick a different looking bus. Like if you had a bus that was really for school, you might want to use the school bus. That's just for cosmetics, really. Some of the bus types do carry a different number of passengers. But the main thing the colour lines do is if we exit now, we can see the purple and the green lines quite obviously. Even when they're next to each other, it's, it's, it's clear there's two routes there. And if we zoom in and exit this bus route, we should see our new buses leaving the bus station, uh, the bus depot, to start on their new route. Here we go. I put down both routes at once whilst we were paused, so we can see both buses come out at the same time. And because I've picked the two different colours, the green route gets green buses and the purple route gets purple buses. As I said, they come out of the depot, so you'll see them start to spam their way out here and spread out around the city. So that's our public transport sort of the moment let's sim some things out and then if we can we'll be able to afford some new some new uh, stuff to add
Here we've got a bit more uh, population and some money come in and we can do some other things to do with transport. Now as well as making uh, public transport you can think about walking and walking is really important because it's cheap for you to provide and it massively reduces traffic. Pretty much all the other forms of public transport you get early on will only increase traffic because people will need to use to walk or use cars to do the last bit of their journey and if you put buses on the roads or trams on the roads they're still on the roads, um, so unless you can afford to do ferries and have a good water system to do it, walking is going to be a big thing for you. Now people cannot cross highways, so if you've got a highway, there's no way for people to cross. You see there's no footpaths or anything, and I've changed this roundabout into a highway so they can't even walk around the edge of it. People like short routes and they like safe routes, so it's normally that they don't want to go long distance. If they can minimise the times they cross a road, that helps, and if they cannot go over fast roads, that also helps. So here this bridge going across these sections is an example of somewhere people will walk and we can see if we zoom right in there is a walking person here and if we click on their route we'll see they'll happily walk quite a long way. They're going all their way home on foot from the ice cube factory where they work into this section here. So people will walk across a whole city block if, if there's a good route for them to take. So what you need to do is provide ways that they will enjoy walking. As I said, this road's given us one good way across. This section here hasn't got anything, so perhaps this is a good place for me to talk about adding walkways of some sort. So if we come into the footpaths, you've got two main ways of getting across a road. I can choose to build here, and I can build up, page up to build up, and make a slope, and then I could go across here, and we get this sort of flyover for pedestrians, build back down, and then connect into somewhere sensible in this corner. I'll turn off all the clipping to place the footpaths because it's usually easier um, for the details to have it so that you can just come up close. It doesn't have to touch, but I expect there, when I click, you can see visually this is merged together. And you, if the, you get the tarmac of the paving or anything joining in with the road, that, that counts as a connection. So people will now be able to walk across here, walk up this kind of steep slope and walk back down. This other end, it looks a bit janky, but that is also in there and counts. I'll see if I can do anything to improve that by putting a little bit more path along this side. So if I'm lucky, maybe I can click somewhere here and improve it. No, so let's try deleting that and then see if I can get rid of the problem. So get my bulldozer, click bulldoze on this. Let's try and build back down from the high point to the low point and squeezing it over into this side. There we go. That looks a bit better now, I think. You can see it's, it's visually better. They would have been able to use the path before, but it just makes it look neater. It's nice as well because it's opposite this walkway, so we'll see people walk over here and come across. A few more ideas of walking is to make routes shorter, so like here would be a nice way for me to do it, perhaps. If I come across here and build a link into here, now people can walk across this road and get into these junctions. You'll notice there are no junctions here anywhere, so there's no way for people to cross this road. People won't just cross in the middle of the roads, so you can think about how to manipulate that as well. Within the base game, there's not a lot of ways you can do things to make it so that you can get crossable roads, but one of the ways that you can introduce um, that you can introduce things is if I was to go here and change this road type, so I've now upgraded this road to a different type, where the road type changes you always get a crossing added sometimes they look a bit weird and you'll have to consider what it means in other terms because this road now has no parking on it for instance but in the vanilla game that's a good way of introducing all these extra roads and if you just saw then some people came scooting along here and they crossed the road which is always handy and i can see by doing this upgrade i've got these junctions on the corner so why not let's talk about the other way you can provide road crossings which is down here, if I go into the thing, instead of building da up, I can build down. So if I page down and then stretch out, I've now got an underground route here. And I could bring this underground route across and then think about where I want to bring that route up. So let's try and get it straight across like this and then I'll pop it up here, I think. So. When it turns blue, you can then build through and I'll connect. And now we have this subway. So people can sort of walk all the way from over there underneath the road and pop up here. That should be a pretty good benefit to them. Let's see if I can sneak one connection into this side as well. If I click page down, I go into the underground side and you can see that I can connect in in various places and I'm gonna connect it there. 
So now we've introduced some more walking options. People can come to here. They can walk underground on the underground route. They can pop out here or they can pop out here. So this has allowed much more pedestrian flow through this area. Let's think about over here if we can produce anything better. We've got a lot of people living here and a lot of industry here. They're going to need to get between them. So either I need to provide an overpass or an underpass to get to there. So I'm going to try and build a raised walkway from here. That's going to go across into this area. I don't have enough. You have to build quite tall to go over roads, which I always think looks odd. So I don't always like it, but it's, it's just a fact of what you have to do. So let's go across a little bit, go up to, and then where can we connect into? I think I'll just build one there and go back down here if I can. I'll put a slight angle on it. So now there's a walking path from here into this side um, without having to go across this quite busy road. So that might encourage people to do more walking. And it connects in the middle, so there's a short way to go in to get to that crossing and the same on this side. And I think that'll do for walking for the moment, combined with our pedestrian stuff and our public transport so far, that should provide a big boost. And the last thing I said I'd look into is ferries, but I think it's too expensive for me to try and start another one of those yet. So we're just going to keep building out for the minute. Here I've zoomed in some more of our specialised forestry industry and uh, this will be making us some more forestry industry products. And these forest products will get brought down here and consumed by some of the regular industry into war resources. So now it's been running a while, I can have a look in here and I can show you how having local supplies affects your traffic. So the first thing I can look at is these natural resources tab and if I go into here we can see it lists the ore, oil, oil, forest and fertile land. It says how much is available and how much is used per week. So available is how much is on the map. So forest is, is just the trees growing and you can see that I'm using 140, 54 of them. As I've got the infinite mod on, if I was to use oil and ore, that wouldn't go down. But if you're not using that modification, you will see these numbers go down over time. You can also see I've got a small amount of fertile land and within my thing, and that's probably this area here. This is the 31 hectares that's it's listing on that spot. The next thing to look at is these outside connections. If we click on this, we can see that there's an import tab and an export tab. Let's start by looking at this import tab because this is the one you can reduce by making products within your city. You can see on this pie chart that there's various colours. The goods are being imported by a large amount into this city, so that's still purple. And you can see on the overview what's consuming the purple goods. Basically, it's all the commercial stuff that's using this purple goods. Pause the game whilst uh, things are going on, because it seems that I need to sort out my water supply down there, and I'll do that for you at the end. We can see that forestry products, there's a big import happening here. There's a big green section, um, and those are being used by these areas. So although I've got some forestry producing industry in these trees it's not enough to keep these um, these from operating so really I need to zone more forestry to supply more forestry stuff you will not be able to control exactly what makes how much forestry production you make and how much forestry consumption you can only zone to say this area should be related to it and you can see that all the forestry production is inside our specialised forestry zone. So if I go into here, you can see this is all our forestry zone. But because we've got quite a lot of stuff being consumed, this bit I just zoned in, an awful lot of what's just been zoned in is supply. So if we go back into this outside connections thing, we're importing quite a lot of forestry products in order to make them into more forestry products and more goods. You can see I've got a small amount of oil products and oil processing and agriculture being imported and those tabs. But the biggest thing is here, we've got a lot of goods imported. So if you want to reduce that, you need to produce more basic industry. So this is not specialized industry, just regular industry. If we go into here, um, this goods unlimited, weirdly enough, is taking in orange, which is agricultural products and turning them into goods. So that's orange in here into purple. 
And if we've got any forestry product ones, these should be taking forestry products and maybe turning them into goods. I'm never quite sure if they make goods themselves or if they make forestry products, which are they taken and turned into goods. But basically, industry provides you with goods. So the more industry you have, the less purple stuff you will need. Total import as well just tells you in total how much stuff is coming in and you probably want to reduce that number. Export is similar to import, basically it tells you how much is coming in and out. So here, because we've got a forestry industry production, we're making a lot of them and you can see that nearly everything that's being exported is to do with the forestry products. This is the special thing you can do with your industry specialization, the basic in-game one. It allows you to focus on exporting some stuff because you can make a lot of one type of thing and then that can generate you some money. But the downside is because it's not generic industry, you need goods and you can see we're not exporting many goods, we're exporting a small amount. But if we go into this tab, we're exporting a huge, importing, sorry, a huge amount of goods. Importing goods costs you money, or at least importing goods doesn't generate you as much profit as it would do if you were able to produce them yourselves. And that basically means we also know that to import goods, I've only got one connection at the moment, all the goods for this city that are being imported come down this motorway and then make their way into these areas, into the purple buildings. So that's the main thing I wanted to cover with you, how the imports and exports work, and we started touching on what these industry specialised areas versus the generic industry do for you. In the next episode, we'll carry on to build out this city and I'll fix the uh, water supply. If we come into my budget, I can see that my budget was down on water, so I can put this back up to 90-ish percent. I like to leave a little bit left so that if I hit this again, I know I need to build more stuff. So now if I hit that sim, we should see that my water supply is now well into the green. So by turning that budget back up, that solved the water supply issues for now, which should be great. The next thing I need to do is look at, is this area covered by services? So it's always worthwhile if you get a moment to, and you've built into a new area just to work your way through the tabs. Electricity, we can see is now covered. Water, good coverage of water. Garbage and industry, uh, to start with, it selects the garbage. So it's, it's a good idea to see that the garbage is there. Probably don't need to worry about anything else in this tab just yet. Healthcare, I've got the basic medical clinic selected and so you can see that there is no healthcare on this side and there's no healthcare in this industry. So I think it's probably worth building a basic healthcare thing in here. And to give us good coverage, placing it here would do a good job or placing it down at this end would also do a good job. And it lets it onto this high speed area. Because the healthcare is more important for um, residential than it is for industry, I'm going to put it down here. It's further away from the other one and it focuses on it. Plus, it's near to this faster road that when I build connections off this side, it'll spread through. Death care, uh, you get quite a large area from the cemetery, so there's no need to change that. I will not go into adding elder care or child care at the moment. You can do both of those things. Elder care basically extends the life of your older residents, so um, it is important to do after a short while because it can smooth out what people call a death wave, where suddenly all your first generation of people in your city all get to the same sort of old age at the same time and everyone lives to about the same age so if everyone hits the everyone 70 years old you'll suddenly get a lot of people dropping dead so you need to smooth that out over time um, and elder care is one of those things that helps smooth that out child health care center is also important that helps with child health and increases birth rate in a small area so if we were to build this it's got a big area of effect so i could put it here and then everything all the residential in that area would get a child care bonus in fact now i'm talking about it and i'm worried about the death care coming so maybe i should think about putting that in somewhere like this i think that would be a pretty good coverage area let's put the death care in the, the elder care in before i, I regret that Fire coverage, you can see fire coverage isn't so good down here, so I need to put a fire station in at this end soon, but um, it's not urgent yet. My industry is the biggest risk and that is covered. And police coverage is pretty good from this earlier police station. This area is a bit low, but there's not much crime, so I think that'll be okay for now. And education is something I need to start providing. Uh, high school is good in this area, but elementary school is not. So an elementary school somewhere on this side would be a bigger benefit. 
I probably don't need to install another library because if I check the public library overview, that one is here and we can see that this public library's area of effect covers quite a large section. So if I was to put an elementary school somewhere down here, I can tell it would still be covered by this library and get the bonus from it. So I think I'll put an elementary school down in this section um, very shortly when I can afford it. Oh, and I can just about afford one. So let's do as I say and pop in an elementary school somewhere there, I think. That'll cover most of this area well. And there we go. Elementary school's in there. Now anyone in this area can start to get educated. And if we look at our public transport, we can see that the bus is now in use. If I go into the overview tab at the first level, you can see how many residents use the bus each week and how many tourists do. And if I go into the overview, you can see how popular the individual routes are. At certain times, it's going to be worth you coming back in here and deciding, do I need to add more stops in? Do I need to remove some stops? Is there an area that isn't serviced very well and needs better coverage or is everything pretty good? Um, so one thing I can show you in here is if we go into this lines overview and select the bus line or go into this menu and click the bus line you can see I can now see this if I ho if I hover over a line you can see it's highlighted now and I can click and hold to drag it and then I get the option of adding more stops and when I put the stop in you'll see that there's a slight dent been put in here and now there's a new bus stop been added in this section. You want to be careful about having bus stops close to major junctions because it can cause traffic as buses try and pull in and out slowly but here on this side road that should be fine. Oh, and I can see that my power infrastructure is also starting to blimp in and out so I need to address that quickly but if I check back in my budget I can see I'm already on 100% power. I don't like putting my power slider above my slider above 100% unless I have to but at the moment, I think I do have to because I cannot afford to build a new wind turbine. So for the moment, I'm going to try and solve my power issue by putting an extra 10% or so into this. Again, there's two sliders for the day and the night cycle. You probably need a little bit more energy at night than in the day, but I generally keep them together. And if I just let that sim, we should be okay. And I'll call that that for the end of the episode. Hopefully my power is just about nearly right. I'm going to have to get some more money and fix that, so... That'll be part of the start of the next episode. Thank you for watching. I've been Logmadar, or Log for short, and I hope you've enjoyed this quick run through of uh, public transport in city skylines. Bye for now. <laughs>